Hi, I'm Amy, this is House of Nash Eats, and today we are making Liège waffles. going to do to make our Liège waffle dough is we're going to combine half a cup of lukewarm milk and I just heated that in the microwave for 20 to 25 seconds I think and then a third of a cup of warm water that I just got from my tap and it should be about 100 to 110 degrees and a teaspoon of granulated sugar three tablespoons of brown sugar and three teaspoons of active dry yeast and we're just gonna give that a little stir and that warm water is going to wake up the yeast, which will feed on the sugar. And it's all going to like foam and get bubbly. And that's called proofing the yeast. And in about five minutes, it'll be bubbly and you'll know that your yeast is awake and ready to go. All right, so now the yeast has proofed and it's proofed, proofed, and it's nice and bubbly. So we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. So the first thing we're gonna do is add two eggs. And you could beat these separately, but they're going to mix in pretty well here. And I don't wanna get another bowl dirty, so they're just going in like this. They're room temperature because we don't wanna bring down the nice warm temperature of the yeast that has just risen, so that helps a lot. Then I have two tablespoons of honey. I'm just gonna eyeball this. That's about two tablespoons. And we've got one and a half tablespoons of vanilla. That really adds like a depth of flavor to this dough, which gives it just a really unique and distinctive flavor. There's nothing quite like a Liège waffle. Then I've got half a teaspoon of salt and one cup of really soft butter. If your butter's not super soft, you could um, cut it into little like cubes and that'll help it mix in a little bit better, but mine is super, super soft. It's really warm in my house. And then I'm going to add one cup of the flour. And I have about four and a half cups of flour measured out here. And this is bread flour. You could use all-purpose flour. Bread flour makes for a little bit chewier result in the waffle. And then I'm going to use my paddle attachment and set this up and we're going to mix this until it starts to combine. Pulse it a little bit at first just to get it going. Okay, and you'll still see chunks of butter floating around in there. It won't have totally mixed in yet. That's totally okay. Now we're adding about another cup of the flour. We're going to mix it again. Okay, and you can see at this point the dough is pretty smooth and you're not seeing any of those lumps of butter anymore because they've been mixed in. And so we're going to switch from the paddle attachment to the dough hook, which is going to handle the rest of the flour a lot better. Okay, now I've got my dough hook attachment and you could do this by hand. Um, totally works just fine. This just makes it a little bit easier if you happen to have a stand mixer or a mixer that can handle bread dough like this. So now I'm going to add almost all of the rest of the flour. So I'm gonna add two more cups and save about half a cup in reserve, which I'll only add if I really need it. So now we're going to knead this. Um, we're gonna get it going and then it will knead for about five minutes until it's pulling away from the sides of the bowl. Okay, and you can see that I just stopped it because it's still sticking a lot to the sides of the bowl. And so I'm gonna add the rest of my flour. And then we'll just let that knead in and see if that's good enough or if we need a little more. Sometimes when you're working with yeast doughs, the humidity can impact how much flour you need, how you measure might impact it a little bit. So give yourself a little leeway, add a little more flour if you feel like it needs a little bit more flour and just watch for the signs like it should be starting to pull away from the sides of the bowl and cleaning it. And you'll know you've got enough flour and not too much. Okay, so you can see that adding that flour just really helped pull the dough away from the sides of the bowl. So it's pretty much cleaned the bowl. And I'm just going to scrape off my dough hook now. Take that off. Whoa. And now I've got a clean bowl that I've put just a little bit of oil in the bottom. And we're going to transfer the dough to this bowl. And it's going to take, we're going to cover it with a piece of plastic wrap and put it in a warm spot to rise for about three hours, which might sound like a lot um, because this is, dough is a little bit different from other doughs. It's enriched with so much butter and eggs that it's a heavier dough and it won't rise 
as quickly as most other like bread or roll doughs will rise if you're familiar with making those kinds of doughs. So we've got three hours at room temperature, then we'll punch it down once and stick it in the fridge to rise overnight. Okay, so I've got my waffle dough that's been in the fridge overnight. So it's been, I don't know, probably 14 hours now on this. Um, it can go up to 24 hours. What it does, having it in the fridge overnight, is it really develops the flavor. And so it has a deeper, more interesting flavor than if you were to make these right away, which technically you could do, but the flavor is much better if it has this slow rise overnight. So now I'm going to add these Belgian sugar pearls. And you can see they're these um, like rock, like little pebble sized pieces of sugar. And they're going to melt and crystallize in the waffle iron while these bake. So these are super good. You can find these online or at food specialty stores like William Sonoma carries them. So I'm just gonna pour them all in. It's just an eight ounce package or about a cup and a half. And then I'm going to knead them in to this dough. And the dough is really hard and really cold and stiff. So it doesn't knead in super easily. We're just trying to get those to evenly disperse throughout the dough. And as you work it around, it's going to mix in and break up a little bit because the dough is going to warm up with your hands a little and that'll help. So we're just gonna get our muscles and get our workout in this morning. We're gonna earn these waffles. You can see that I've got my sugar pearls kind of evenly dispersed throughout the dough. And now I'm going to divide this into about 10 to 12 balls of dough. Try to make them evenly sized. I guess you could weigh them if you really wanted to, but I'm just gonna divide them into 10 to 12 balls of dough and shape them into circles. So I like to use my handy dandy pastry cutter and I'm just going to cut right down the middle and then cut it apart. Okay, and once they're all divided and they're roughly about the same size, I'm just going to shape them with my hands into balls of dough. And if you have some sugar pearls in your bowl that didn't quite mix in, go ahead and just add them to your balls of dough as you're working them with your hands and shape them in and it'll be totally fine. Okay, so I've rolled these all into balls and now we're gonna put them in our waffle iron. So I've got a Belgian waffle iron and this is a pretty heavy duty one. The one thing I'll say about these is this is a pretty thick, heavy dough. Um, so you really want a heavy duty waffle maker. Um, I also usually have a hot pad on hand to help press it down. So I'm going to open up my waffle iron, which has been preheating to kind of a lower setting, kind of medium low. And I'm just going to do two of these at a time. I'm gonna press them a little bit flat into kind of a disc and set them on here just like this. Then I'm gonna press it down and really press it closed. Okay, so these have been cooking for about four minutes and you can see they're a beautiful golden brown and we are ready to transfer them. Now they're super, super hot because of that sugar that melts around them. So use forks or tongs or something so that you don't burn your fingers. I'm just gonna move these over to my wire rack. And the wire rack keeps waffles from steaming on the bottom and it helps them just stay nice and crisp. You can kind of see how the sugar pearls have car like caramelized and melted around the edges and they make this like crispy shell on the outside. It's so, so good. So I'm just gonna finish cooking the rest of my waffles. It does make a little bit of a mess in your waffle maker, but it's pretty easy to clean out while the sugar is still warm. Just grab a knife or the, like, the handle of a spoon or something and it should come out pretty easily. All right, so we've got all of our Liège waffles cooked, and now I'm going to show you how I like to eat them, although you can eat them any way you like. But, so I'm gonna take one of my warm Liège waffles, and I like to top mine with some Biscoff cookie butter. You could use Nutella, drizzle it with chocolate syrup, you could top these with ice cream, if you're doing like a dessert waffle, which I, we always treat these like dessert. Um, we don't really eat these for breakfast, except for sometimes on Christmas. We'll make these, it's a good like Christmas breakfast because you can make them overnight and have the dough ready and just cook them in the morning. So I top it with cookie butter, and then I do a scoop of whipped cream, and this is sweetened whipped cream. And then I like to add sliced strawberries and raspberries. 
So there's a place in Provo, Utah, um, where I went to college called Waffle Love, and they make these Liege waffles. It's actually the first place I ever had them, and they call this, where they do the cookie butter and the berries and whipped cream, their Red Wonder waffle, I think. So I super duper love it. It's something I would always get, one of my favorite treats, and they're really hearty. So this is how you make a Red Wonder Liege waffle that's just like the ones you get at Waffle Love, and it's so good. Or you can just eat it plain. Okay, so now is the best part. We get to actually eat the waffles. So I'm going to have mine with the cookie butter and everything, because that's my favorite way. They're super good just plain on their own too, but man, this is like a really delicious dessert. And sometimes we'll have friends over and do like a waffle party. And it's great because you can have everything done ahead of time and just make the waffles and they cook in like four minutes and you've got a hot dessert. Okay, here we go. Mm. Wow, this is so, so amazing. It's got the really crisp exterior from that melted caramelized Belgian pearl sugar, sugar pearls. And the inside is like got that really developed flavor from the yeast and the honey in the really enriched dough. With all the toppings, it's amazing. This is one of the best desserts you'll ever try or have it for breakfast, I won't tell. If you guys like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel and tell me in the comments below how you will top your waffle.